This is his daily routine. He wakes up in the morning and enjoys a nice breakfast with his soy milk and his Cheerios. I do not have a problem. I never did have a problem. I never will have a problem. Les rêves des amoureux sont comme le bon vin. Ils donnent de la joie ou bien du chagrin. Hey guys, it's me Brandon. If you're watching this, that means that you got this far through the quarantine. So congratulations to you. I am so proud. Aren't you proud, Brandon? Yeah, he's proud. I guess I should tell you what's going on, right? Welcome to the world premiere of Quarantine Kitchen. As you can see, I am in my kitchen. Not funny. Oh, that's not funny? Hmm. Ouch. Okay. In this episode of Quarantine Kitchen, we will be focusing on food. We will watch our fellow peers make dishes that are imperative to the survival through this quarantine. Because who doesn't love a good... Oh, and I almost forgot, we have our famous food critic, Wesley. Hi, Wesley. How you doing? Okay, so Wes isn't going to be reporting any critiques or anything until the end of the show. Stay tuned. I say we start off with a bang and feature the one and only Jeremy Olsten making veggie dogs. Mr. Olsten here and when I'm in crisis I always turn to my comfort foods and what says comfort food more than eyeballs and cow rectums. Frankly I was a little bit tired of that and many years ago I became a vegetarian. I also uh, made my son become one as well. You can see he's really happy about that. In any case Today we're going to be cooking out over an open fire vegetarian hot dogs for all the veggie fans in the crowd. So first up, um, make sure that you have more than just the veggie hot dogs. You also want to have your buns. Um, if you're lucky enough, as I was this morning, to get to a grocery store where they have actual uh, Aunt Millie stadium style honey, honey uh, hot dog buns, you're in luck. If you're not in luck, you'll end up with something that nobody else wanted, like these uh, brioche rolls, French French recipe, no less. Uh, they're actually pretty good. But a hot dog will work in just about anything. The big deal is, can you find the veggie hot dogs? The answer is probably yes, because a lot of people are afraid to taste those too. But I'm here to tell you, they taste a lot like the real thing. So let's go outside, start the fire, and we'll move on to the next so step. So what some of you may have at home is a typical barbecue grill, and those work fine. We do not have one, but we do have this cool little uh, camp fire pit that I picked up for backpacking a couple of years ago preloaded with crumpled newspaper When you're building your fire you want to make sure that you've got newspaper in there also at the ready some small sticks leading up to bigger sticks and then you light the blaze as such Kids don't burn your fingers or if you've got exceptionally hairy hands like me Don't burn the hair off of your hands either and make sure your parents know you're doing this Sometimes parents freak out when you start using fire but you know me, I'm Sergeant Safety, safety first. And while we're waiting for this little puppy to get up to full blazing strength, let me tell you a little bit about the history of the modern day hot dog. Originally developed in Frankfurt, Germany, the hot dog was known as the Frankfurter. After that, it went through different phases of name recognition, including weenie or wiener, also tube steak. Um, and right before it was named the hot dog, Interestingly enough, a man was eating a tube steak on the Jersey Pier. Apparently he was really good looking and a young woman came up to him and said, Man, you are so hot, dog. And that's uh, how the hot dog got its name. The rest is history. Sometimes it requires some hot air. Once you have your blaze going, you don't actually want to cook over it just yet. Um, you really do want the fire to die down first, so you get this nice glowing ember bed. And that's the part you're gonna cook over. If you cook over the flames, um, like we have here, you're gonna get this really kind of uh, dark, sooty, um, kind of charred hot dog, 
where the outside is really crispy, but the inside isn't really done. So we wanna make sure that we're cooking over the embers that are left behind. When the moment of truth arrives, you will know because the flame will no longer be present. And then you're gonna skewer your vegetarian hot dog. We're using skewers that are typically used for shish kebab, the little bamboo type. And then bring the hot dog down really close to the coal bed and begin rotating slowly. Sometimes with the vegetarian hot dogs in particular, um, because there's so much moisture inside, the moisture will expel quicker than the hot dog can handle and you'll get these little bubbles. That's a good sign that it's actually cooking from the inside out and it's really what you're looking for. Again, you don't want it to burn, so if you have to add fuel, add fuel to the backside of your burn and keep your hot dog um, located more towards the front so the fire can keep going. Once you feel like your hot dog is done, it's warm enough, you can pull the skewer, plate it, put it in a bun, and you're ready to go. If you're like my son and you're a bit of a deviant and you prefer no ketchup or mustard or any other condiments, eat the hot dog as is. Otherwise, add your favorite and enjoy. How is it? Good. And lastly, one quick pro tip. If you're out of ketchup and you don't want to go out in the apocalypse, make sure you check your glove box because you probably have little packets in there. Most people do. Oh, he's got good hot dogs. I need his hot dog fan. Wow, that's, that's very interesting, actually. I actually, I wonder what vegetables taste like. See, I'm not carnivore, so I only eat meat, no vegetables. Oh, what's that, Brandon? Nobody cares, Brandon? Hmm? I guess we're gonna watch Sam make some mac and cheese. What? What? And now for one of the most fun and best dishes to make, we're gonna be making mac and cheese. To make it, we'll need to pot the boiled water. The other thing to mix everything. And we'll need a strainer that puts the water in the mac and cheese stuff. And then we put the mac and cheese in the pot to stir it up. And then the magical mac and cheese itself. That's not the one we want. Get that out of here. We want the shapes, because the shapes are the best part. So what we do, we take a pot. Turn the water on. Do, do, do. And now we wait. So that's good enough. And we put it over here. We put the other thingy on. And then we wait. And now it's all boiled. So, we take the better mac and cheese. We just rip it up. Or, hey, it's open now. And we take this up. We go, whoa. And we stir occasionally. After the amount of time that was on the box, we put it over there. We turn this off. We put the strainer in the sink. Like that. And we take this. Ooh, be careful because it's hot. And go swish swish. Look at all that fine mac and cheese. Dip. And we put this back. We take thing. We bring this over here, and sploosh. And we take this. Hold on, hold on. That was cold for it. Tear off the paper. And then we go whoosh. Get all that cheese. And then, we stir it up with the magical spoon. It's all cheesy. But, as the box says, we can put milk in it, so we should put that. I mean, it's hard doing this with one hand, but you know what? We got it. Um, it says an amount that I'm not going to read, so we just pour it in until we feel like it. Oh, sorry there. Technical difficulty, but voila! We have awesome mac and cheese. Okay, what do we have next? Brandon, what's next? Ryan Glant. The Ryan Glant. Let's see what he's making. Hey guys, so today I'll be teaching you guys how to make grilled cheese like a professional. Okay, so here are the ingredients that you'll need. Grab two slices of bread, some cheese, some butter, a knife, and a plate. Okay, now that you got all your ingredients, you can throw on your stove and get cooking. But remember, never touch the stove or the hot pan while cooking. Ooh. <laughs> now that you got that pan all warmed up, grab that bread and butter it up. Now for the best part. 
actually cooking it. Gently place those butter up slices of bread and onto the steaming hot pan. Uh, sir, uh, what about the cheese? Oh yeah, right. The cheese. Remove the top bread and apply that cheese I didn't forget about. Grab your trusty spatula for gluttony floppy time and let it cook for about 5 to 10 minutes. Uh, sir, wouldn't you burn it if you cooked it for about 5 or 10 minutes? Ha! That's ridiculous. After about 5 to 10 minutes, shovel that bad boy out of that greasy pan and onto the nice and clean plate. And remember, always check both sides to... <gasps> Maybe I put it on for too long. I hope Chef Wiggins doesn't uh, kill me for this. Anyways, uh, that's how you make grilled cheese professionally. And uh, now back to you guys in the studio. I'm not in the studio, but thanks, Ryan Glant. Now we have Jake with Jake's Date Night. Beautiful, such. I'm, I'm okay. Who's next? Who's next? This, this is my meal. The plastic, the part of it, it's added flavor. Thank you, Hannah. Anyways, Wes, what's the deal? What is this? We're doing a dinner party now? Let's see what we got here. Oh my, oh my god. Uh, oof. Oh, that's, that's terrible. Oh my god. Oof. Huh. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> the only one sniffing is me when I'm crying as I look at this presentation. Flippity floppity. The sandwich is a flippity flop. You killed your bloody customers. Thank you, Wes. <laughs> now these dishes are good and all, but you can't go wrong with a simple bowl of Cheerios. Isn't that right, Brandon? Yes. Anyways, um, thanks for tuning in. Stay safe and stay healthy. It's been real, guys. Bye. I just broke a banana.